so, uh, hey everyone, I thought I might just give a quick update on the uh, current state of uh, uh, my project. I think I've, show, I've shown a couple of uh, pictures of the glove working with uh, bean sensors. Uh, current iteration is using a Razor Hydra uh, control board mounted on the back uh, with the bean sensors and TNC mounted inside, all hooked up via lots of rather too many wires for my liking, but you know, wireless version one day when uh, Sixteenth finally releases the stem units. But in the meantime, this works pretty well. Um, I have a second glove working at the moment, unfortunately busted half the Hydra, and it's a little hard to get uh, hold of replacement units at this point, so just waiting on that to sort of come through um, before I get the second one going. But um, this one works pretty well. So I'm just going to go through the calibration process to start off with, if I can see. So, if we're lucky, no, okay, let's just run that again, likes to do interesting things when you start it off, there we go, okay, so that works. Um, okay, now um, I just calibrated by sort of cycling through a series of uh, different gestures, like so. Yeah, it stores those up. I'm planning on having it so that it actually provides uh, per finger animation in the future, so I'll be able to visually see what fingers are being held down. Um, cool, let's see. That should work. All right, cool. So anyway, let's go grab that. So how this functions, it, well, how the gestures work is I'm using a uh, RBF, a radial basis function implementation uh, based off um, J.P. Lewis's post-based deformation paper. I think it's, well, it's the basis that I'm using where um, I can sort of map uh, the sort of noisy analog values of the bin sensors uh, on the hand to whatever gesture I want. So even if they're like sort of very wildly sort of uh, 500, 400, 300, like very large numbers fluctuating all over the place, I can say this particular uh, configuration will be grass. There we go. And then I can physically move the object around and see it in front of me. Move it around and stuff. So these, um, this carousel of rainbow colors here are my instruments because uh, this entire setup they have right now is a music controller. So for interacting specifically in this case with Ableton Live, uh, but it can be used for other systems as well as long as they communicate um, with OSC. Uh, I've used in the past to control, um, in a previous iteration to control uh, sort of uh, dynamic visuals that were generated for a, um, a visual performance and I'll see if I can dig some footage of that out at some point in the previous version. But anyway, I think we might just do a quick run through. So yeah, I can uh, sort of pick out these different instruments from my rotunda if I need. Um, stuff's out of the way, then I can sort of scroll through if I want. Needs a, a little bit of tweaking for some of the speed, for example. Uh, but I can use that to sort of establish, um, okay, which instrument I want to grab. Most is color coded. Um, text is still a little bit of an issue on the roof, but yeah, it's, uh, we'll get there. Anyway, so I'm going to work on, uh, I can sort of do a gesture. These are showing all the clips that I can choose. So I'm going to choose this one. Ah, of course, I haven't got an actual UI sorted out yet. All right, so yeah, there's different menus for me to sort parameters or clips. So that's some of that white text. But anyway, yeah, but pull backwards from here. I can create myself a UI pane. So this is sort of a um, floating control panel of sorts, which will allow me to sort of group together clips and uh, attributes from different instruments. So this over here being my instrument, I'm going to queue up a clip. There we go. So over here, I have a clip sort of, I can sort of build up these banks and they'll move up vertically. Uh, I can include clips from different instruments if I wanted to, trigger them all at the same time, trigger them differently, uh, instantly play them as I press them, sort of like this um, control, like just a controllable bank of buttons. If you've seen a uh, Novation Launchpad, I think, I think it's a Novation Launchpad, uh, then they use a similar sort of mechanism where you can press buttons for Ableton Live and they will trigger different clips. Uh, in this case, so they're going to work. So there we go. So cool, I'm going to queue up any clips I want. 
I go. So I can play a different sequence if I want to. That one sounds good. Alright, so those clips are good. I'm going to hook up some parameters now just to show how that works. So in this menu, let's see. You might have to bear with me, some of these may or may not work. It's a lot of manual calibration at this stage. But anyway, let's have a listen. So that's kind of a direct control where I can sort of directly manipulate any of these uh, sliders that um, move around the scene. Uh, so at the moment that's just the high cut, um, high cut filter from my PGA. So I'm going to keep that low so I can uh, sort of talk right now. Alright, let's, um, let's get rid of some of these. That one isn't... yeah, that one needs to be re There you go, that works. Alright, I'm just going to quickly add a gate, if I can find it. I'm thinking of implementing maybe a uh, sort of like rotating system to get this working instead. It's actually quite difficult to sort of be able to accurately predict the stuff in, in, three, in 3D with your hands. Well that seems to be a bit of a bug. Yeah, I'm on. There we go. Okay, cool. So now that I have these parameters sort of all sorted out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind them to this uh, control panel so I can actually sort of control them all at the same time with a single gesture, uh, which is a lot easier than sort of being able to try to sort of move my hand over and control multiple parameters. So um, at this stage it's a, little, it's a little bit too hard to sort of work just with individual controls, which uh, I'm working on. But in this case what I can do is I can create a couple of parameters up here, or a couple of parameter sort of anchors. Uh, this is running on the same, funnily enough, the same sort of system that's actually driving the gesture recognition on the gloves. So, let me just grab that, and grab that. So now what they'll do is these points will store um, the values. So I've set the scene up again uh, just around a couple of problems. As you can see, once I have all the anchor points set up, as I blend between them, I can actually change what the parameters are all at the same time just by determining how close I am to the anchor points. Of course, manual control still works, so if I want. Individually change this values. All right. So I'm going to quickly uh, try something different. I'm going to um, uh, pop open another UI over here, and I'm going to just populate this one now with um, a couple of parameters just to control like an effects unit, so I can modify the existing sound. So let's pop you out. I honestly don't know which one that is. I think we need to go for the purple one. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look. No, don't want you. Yeah, let's go. Control one, control two. No, hang on, I'm just going to turn this There we go. There we go. This one. All 
Or what? Excuse me, you're a jar. Basically, um, it right now in the nutshell. There's uh, a lot of things I want to get um, going in the future, uh, such as being able to control individual uh, instruments, uh, actual notes playing, and you know, I think I can use a similar sort of system. I'd also like to maybe break out some of the control out of sort of the two-dimensional grids and a more a more three-dimensional area, like being able to actually use uh, which angle the hand is at, for example. I thought might be um, a nice addition just to sort of make it so that the gestures you do um, perform within the uh, environment so it makes sense for the top for the music that you're actually controlling so I'm trying to get away from like certain sliders and knobs which is kind of what I've got right now and it's more sort of expressive gestures like to be able to sort of flip between different uh, different sort of states being able to pull in and out I want sort of um, you know if we've got this sort of glove system why not sort of use it uh, do some sort of crazy um, crazy ways of actually controlling these parameters rather than just uh, uh, relying on um, you know the old-fashioned method but anyway yeah um, expect uh, some more updates from me as um, I uh, finish this up get this going a bit further uh, I can't wait to actually get it going to the point where I want to see if I can actually do some proper live songs maybe some live looping with it and see how well the system sort of works um, but yeah anyway thanks for watching <laughs>